In this tutorial, I'm going to create a Windows System Image file, or WIM. And I'm going to do this with the intent of taking a computer system running Windows 7 and generalizing it and creating a golden image, or WIM file, which you could then deploy and install across an entire network. Now to do this, we're going to have to go through four basic steps. One, we're going to have to prepare our Windows 7 machine that we're going to use as our reference computer for our golden image. So one, we're going to run sysprep on a Windows 7 machine. Two, we're going to need to boot from a Windows PE boot disk. Three, we're going to need to capture the image of the system using the program image X. And then four, we're going to need to save our captured image or WIM file to an external drive, in this case a USB flash drive. So, our reference computer is the system that we want to create an image from and then deploy across the network. It's a Windows 7 machine, and I've decided, for the sake of this tutorial, to use a virtual machine, a VMware virtual machine. So you can see that I have the VMware virtual machine right here on my desktop. All right. Next, we're going to need a Windows PE boot disk. In the previous tutorial, I showed how to create a Windows PE x86 boot disk. And you can see here on the side, I've got the file right here that we ended up with. It's winpe x86.iso. This is a Windows PE boot disk. If you burned it to a CD, you'd have a boot disk. In this case, I have the ISO file right here. And we're going to boot directly to this ISO file. So let's get started. Now, before we run sysprep on our Windows 7 virtual machine, let's go through a few preparations for the virtual machine. So I'm going to click on the virtual machine back here. Notice I have a few programs installed on it. And I'm going to go to Player, Removable Devices, Network Adapter, just to show you the settings. The settings of my network adapter are bridged. That way I'm able to pick up a IP address from my wireless router. And I was able to download and install a few programs. I've got a USB controller right here, which either came with the virtual machine by default or I added it through here. Next, what we're going to need to do is, after this machine is sysprepped, we're going to want to boot to our Windows PE boot disk over here on the right. I can do that directly by selecting CD DVD and then choosing Use ISO image file. The default is here, you see Use Physical Drive. So what you want to do is change that and say, I want to use an ISO image file and then browse for your Windows PE x86.iso file. You can see I have it right there, and so now I'm ready. So the next time this machine starts, the ISO file will be loaded into the virtual CD DVD optical drive, and we should be able to boot to it easily. Okay, and the next thing that I want to do is I also want to see about possibly loading this Toshiba external hard drive and seeing if I can connect to it. So let's connect to it. Click OK. The reason I'm doing this is notice in the diagram that once we sysprep the system, boot to the Windows P boot disk and capture the image, we're going to need to save our WIM file, our Windows system image somewhere and I want to do it in this tutorial to a USB flash drive that I've attached to my laptop. So for this to work, we need to be able to connect to this USB external hard drive from our VM, from our virtual machine. So we'll see here, you can see here I'm in the VM right now, and you can see that it sees my, and you can see that it sees my external hard drive right here, new volume E, and so we'll be able to connect to it to save our WIM file once we've captured it. So that's great. So I'll close that. And so now we're ready to sysprep our system. So I'm going to go to Start, Programs, Accessories, and then the Command Prompt. I'm going to right click on the Command Prompt and select Run as Administrator. Alright, I have my command prompt. I'm going to 
make the font slightly bigger so that it's easier to see for the video. Okay, so now you should be able to see it. What we're going to want to do is run sysprep.exe. Now, it should be in the System32 folder. Let's change directory and go into the sysprep folder. Notice that I'm already in Windows System32, right? So I'm going to do a CD and go into the sysprep folder. And now you see that I'm in the sysprep directory. And we'll do a DIR to list what's in the directory. And you can see there's the file sysprep.exe. So it's located in the Windows folder, System32 folder. In the sysprep folder, you should find sysprep.exe. So I'm going to run it. So we'll just type sysprep and hit return. We should see the program launch. Okay, there it is. So it launched, and you can see the tab here in the bottom of my quick launch bar. And this is what it looks like when you've launched sysprep. And system cleanup action enters system out of the box experience. That's what we want to choose. We want to basically generalize our system or sysprep it into an UBI or out of the box experience, user experience. And we're going to select generalize because we want to generalize the system, removing any um, specific hardware settings that are on the device, which will basically enable us to then install this image across a network. And then shutdown options, I'm going to just choose shut down. When it's done, I want it to shut down. And we'll click OK. And now the system is being sysprepped and being generalized and all of the hardware specific settings are being removed and it's being returned to basically the out of the box experience when you've just installed an operating system and you haven't even created a user yet. So that's where the system is being sent back to. Okay, so you can see that the system is now shutting down. Uh, sysprep worked and it's now shutting down the system and then when we restart we're going to attempt to boot to our Windows PE boot disk. Okay, so the Windows 7 system shut down, so now I'll select it in my VMware player. I've relaunched VMware player, and I've selected the system I want to boot to, and I'll click play. And I'm going to click in the window and press the escape key as quick as I can to try to get to a boot menu. and you can see I was not able to get to the boot menu. So I'm going to reset it and click inside and press escape. All right, and I'll press F8. Nope, that's not what I want. When you reset the VMware player, basically it shows you very quickly how to escape to get to the boot menu. That's what I need to do. So I'll press reset and I'm pressing escape. The escape key and it didn't work. Okay, once again press reset and you have to go really quickly here alright I was able to do it when you're successful what you want to do is is click inside of the window in the VMware player just as it's booting up press the escape key and you should be able to get to the boot menu so now in the boot menu I'm able to specify basically I'll click in the window here to capture the cursor and then arrow down to the CD-ROM drive and press enter and press any key to boot to the CD and now we're going to boot basically I'll hit control alt on my keyboard to escape the key to escape the cursor and as you can see we're now booting okay it worked 
So clicking in the window with the cursor as the VMware player is booting up and pressing the escape key enables you to boot to the Windows PE x86.iso boot disk. I'll hit Control alt to release my cursor just to show you that right now we've booted to this ISO file right here. So now I'm in the Windows PE boot disk and I'm ready to capture my generalized system.